or basically the love for tattoos like pretty much everybody else you know but, well not maybe not in this day and age you know today a lot of kids uh, want to start tattooing just so they end up in a TV show or something you know history so obviously I opted for uh, basically historical styles uh, like ethnic styles uh, tradition of any kind uh, and such as you can see behind me my work and uh, all that links towards Celtic and Viking design most of the time I also spread that into uh, the, like, the traditional designs of the tribes from Borneo uh, from New Zealand from, you know, like other locations as well. I'm trying to constantly spread my knowledge about this uh, into a wider area. Put my tentacles everywhere, so to speak. They mostly reflect uh, reflect my value system and my past. I used to be a military man before this, and it has a lot to do with that, you know, with, uh, with the warrior cult, so to speak. The industry is getting overpacked by uh, the superficial people, opportunists. Uh, it's too easy to become a tattoo artist these days. It's too easy to get recognized. You can become an instant star without even uh, having to pay your dues to the industry. You know? It's not the envy. It's not uh, the money thing. It's just the fact that uh, we've been putting in so many years to uh, have this trade recognized as like a respectable craft and now there's so many people uh, constantly working on turning it uh, into a hobby soon enough it's gonna be nothing special you know or you're a tattooist so is my uncle so is my uh, nephew like everybody's a tattooist these days everybody has to do five things at a time and uh, they just do tattooing as one of these things is like almost mandatory for to be cool in the neighborhood. So yeah, that kind of uh, disillusions the, uh, the dedicated professionals that you're surrounded with on this on this convention in particular. You can see it in the length of, uh, of in the in the duration of, of the popularity of these young stars. You know, they they're like super famous uh, today and. Three days later, there's another name out there, and these guys were completely forgotten. I mean, I've always, always drawn and done art, so as soon as I started getting tattoos and planted the seed, you know, that I thought it would be something really great that I would love to do, and I pursued it. I like real traditional styles of tattooing, or to take inspiration from them, especially like American traditional and Japanese. I kind of try to explore both those styles, but kind of separately. Mostly, mostly older, you know, older guys from like, you know, the early 1900s, the 30s and stuff. Ben Corday, um, you know, Sailor Jerry, of course, uh, and all the all the way up to the 60s. Um, uh, Bob Wicks is one of my favorite old time tattooers. Um, all the way up to like Ed Hardy, Mike Milan. <laughs> so I like to look to the past. Uh, it's really exploded. Like you know, there's so many more tattooers and shops and and clients. So you know, it all kind of balances out. But it's been crazy, crazy to watch. <laughs> you know, supply companies and TV shows and all that stuff. Like none of that was relevant. I usually like something new that I do for a little while, and then I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I'm like my own worst critic. You know, so. I like things for about two weeks, and then. <laughs> And then I gotta do something better, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Anything that's uh, drawn well and designed as a tattoo so that it will hold up well over time, I, I think is fine. You know, they've been piling up over the years, you know. Like, I started out, I lived in a really small town and started getting tattooed, uh, you know, by guys that were just worked out of their house because I didn't know any better when I was a kid. We didn't even have tattoo shops there. And so the, the more I learned about it, you know, I learned I could act actually go get good tattoos <laughs> so uh, and then and then I started tattooing I like to get tattooed by my friends and people I work with and people that inspire me so I just collect them I'm critical of all, all the tattoos I've done in the past but just so that I can 
see what I would do differently and try and grow. When I was you know, younger, in my late 20s, when I finally got into it properly, um, it was a very different world and it wasn't quite as fashionable as it is now. It wasn't anything like as fashionable. It wasn't fashionable at all. It was, it was considered very weird and odd. Uh, for me, as an ex-art school boy, to decide that tattooing was going to be my chosen medium was considered really quite an odd thing. It was very difficult to get any information. This is completely pre-internet, of course. And the tattoo world was quite closed. People weren't willing to tell you anything, really. Um, there weren't even any conventions, really. Um, so it's a completely different world. But it was also easy in that I was doing something a little bit different, and there was I had customers almost immediately with people I knew and my extended social network produced people out of nowhere that were willing to get tattooed by me very, very quickly. So I managed to give up my day job almost immediately and, and, and I've been tattooing ever since. I don't have a specific style as strong as some people do, especially not now. Uh, then I was doing something really quite different and I, and I had a sort of take on it. I had an angle on what I was doing that was different from what anyone else was doing at the time. But I still did a much broader range of work than some people now who are well known and specialise very specifically. The scene has changed enormously. It used to be much, much, much smaller. It was like a little club, really. It was more like a fetishy, alternative culture sort of scene. Now it's just gone much more mainstream, which is fine. It is a proper art form that's come up, it is a proper lowbrow art form, I guess, that's come up outside of the constraints of the gallery system. And then the gallery fine art system is fucked, really. It's so exploitative. I mean, it really is. And tattooing is a, in its beautiful essence, it's a kind of private contract between you, the tattoo artist, or the client, and the tattoo artist. It's a two-person contract. In, in, its, in its pure essence, it avoids any interference from outside influences. As a friend of mine once said, we no longer own the tattoo world. The tattoo world used to belong to the tattoo artists. We were the ones who determined who is good, who is uh, mediocre, who is great. And uh, we, we set down the rules. And uh, basically, uh, we, were the, we were the judge on, on who is who in the tattoo world. Nowadays, it's Facebook and uh, TV producers. So we no longer own the world we live in, we form, you know. So that makes us kind of bitter, but uh, I mean, it's, it's not uh, journalists' uh, blame that, that it is what it is. It's just that uh, tattooing has become the victim of its own popularity.